Rebecca Miller's first film, Angela, premiered at the 1995 Sundance Film Festival. Angela won the filmmaker's trophy, but could not get a distribution deal until this year. This is the first movie written and directed by Miller, who also worked as an actress, paints, and is the daughter of playwright Arthur Miller. I am pleased to have her on this broadcast. Welcome. Thank you. It is good. And this, why this movie? What's Angela? What's this story about, and why is it important to you? Well, I, I really began with the characters. The characters of the children uh, spoke very loudly in my head for a long time. I was writing other screenplays, uh, teaching myself, in a way, how to write screenplays by writing them. And uh, these characters kept coming up as minor figures in other screenplays. And finally, they were clamoring so loudly and were so deep as characters that I started to really write a, a, a screenplay that was based on them at the suggestion of a, of a friend who read it and said, you know, these are the... These are the magnificent characters. And so once I did that, the story sort of took off, and uh, the characters told me the story in a way. You said at one point, I was always auto-suggestible as a child. You know, and this is a tale of an imaginative 10-year-old child who has religious-inspired visions. Yes. Yes, I had a... a a, 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 a real ability to scare myself to death as a kid and spend a lot of my time do, doing that. I would, I would uh, think of something really frightening and then it would last for a long time. And Lucifer being one of the things that scared me so much, my mother quite innocently told me the story of the fall of the angels, Lucifer being the head yeah. bad angel. And uh, I became convinced that he lived in the basement and in various places in the house. And in part, uh, I was trying in the film to recapture that particular very, very real fear of a young child that's living in the real world, knows mm -hmm. that she's living in the real world, but also uh, is living equally really in another dimension, in this frightening kind of uh, metaphysical dimension. Was it important to you to, to make this kind of film as a, for you as a first film? Uh, something that's personal, something that you know that, you know, this is not a story that's apart from you because of your yes. own emotional attachment. I think it was important for me to start off on the right foot in a way, to start off truly uncompromised because this film is, is truly an uncompromised film. And I think that that was very important for me because I thought if I, if I started that way, presented myself that way to both myself and the world as a filmmaker, mm -hmm. then uh, I wouldn't have to backstep later and say no no but I'm really somebody else if I if I present myself uh, truthfully from the beginning and that doesn't mean that every film I make in the future is going to echo Angela but simply that I'd like to put my own stamp on yeah. everything I do. Why did you have to go through painting and filmmaking to get to directing? Well I mean you know I don't, it wasn't a conscious choice. I began as a painter and believed in it with all my heart. And at a certain point, I wanted my paintings to start moving in to time. To have a narrative and to start yeah. moving. And then, that's, then I started making the short, tiny little films that I was making. And then the acting came as an opportunity, and I took it. And I had no idea that I would end up getting, for a period of four or five years, I made a few movies and, and was in a couple of plays and worked with great directors, which I think taught me a lot and bridged the gap between being a painter, really, and being somebody who could tell a story and narrative a story and film. But do you now find the most satisfaction from directing and telling a story, more oh, yeah. than being on stage, more than painting, more than... Yes, it's uh, by far the most wonderful and complete experience I've ever had as an artist. It, 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 uh, there's a kind of transparency that I experience when I'm directing that I find uh, very pleasurable. A transparency? Yes, I, it's as if one isn't really there. You are really existing for other people, in a sense. You're watching the actors, you're watching the images, you're watching the story. And in a sense, you yourself evaporate. At least that's my own <laughs> personal experience. It's a kind of a very unselfconscious state. Mm. And I think a very pure state, in a way. Uh, you exist for the story. And... Uh, and, and, I, and, and there's a great beauty and satisfaction in that for me. Let me take a look at a clip we have of Angela. Before I do that, can you set up this first segment we're going to see? Uh, the fir well, the first segment is where Angela tells the story of Lucifer and the angels, the fall of the angels to her sister Ellie. And what's interesting is in, the, in this first segment, this first 
seen, she is, in a way, using it with a little sadistic twist. She's, she's, she's using it to frighten her sister. And what happens in the course of the film is gradually Angela comes to believe her own stories and is finally completely overtaken by them to the point of almost hallucination. Roll tape. Here it is from Angela. <laughs> Do you have a different experience every time you see it? Yeah. I mean, you were sort of intently, as we watched that together, I looked over at you and you were... And what were you thinking? I was thinking that, in a sense now, because this is a, a year now that we made the film, those girls look different the than night. they did. Yeah. And it, it is very especially beautiful to me that it documented a particular moment in their lives which will never happen again. And those girls really opened their souls to the camera. They gave, they gave it everything they had. And that, to me, is one of the most moving things about this film, is uh, just how profound their performance is. And how did you get them to do that? Trust. They, they, it, was a, it, was a, it was a process of getting them to trust me and really having me get to a point where I really trusted them. We, we spent a lot of time together where we would play the games that are in the film, kind of lived in the world of, of those girls. Uh, and just talked about our, well, especially their emotional lives, especially the Miranda Store Ryan, who plays Angela. We needed to know where her points were, what, what, what made her cry, you know, uh, what made her angry. Everything that made her tick, in a way. We had to really kind of go deeply into this little girl's life. And it was a very intimate relationship between me and Miranda. How much of it is autobiographical? I think... Uh, m mostly the kernel of it, which is the story of the devil, the preoccupation with the devil, and the kind of religiousness, the obsession with religion, which I also had. Um, the, the, the parents, in a way, grew out of that, but they don't reflect my own parents. They are, in a way, combinations of people that I've known in my adulthood. You went through an intense course in Catholicism. Yes. And came out of it how? I don't think you, you, you can ever go back once you've gone through that door. Uh, once a Catholic, I don't think you can ever really uh, completely purge it from your system. Yeah, but why did you do it? Um, I did it because initially out of fear, I think, uh, which I think is a lot, the way a lot of children come to religion is through fear. fear the devil, yeah, no. the devil fear. comes first. Yeah. You know, fear of sin, of having sinned. Of, if you die, you're going to go to hell. And I mean, there's a chance that that's really going to happen, and you don't necessarily want that to happen. And I was always sure that I would be the one to go to hell. So at first, I wanted to be baptized. Because you were bad or because? I think, I think that... All children feel that in some way they're bad. They've all done something bad. All children have some little sin inside of them, big or small, that they're uh, hiding from the world. Little, little things or big things. Yeah, and have no sense of the context of it or that other people have done it or any of those things. Yes, so right. So therefore it looms large in their soul. It looms large in their world. Absolutely. And also there's this sense of exaggerated sense of responsibility that children yeah. have, which in part the film is about. I mean, one man came to me that had seen Angela and was very told me a moving story where he had two sons, a little a baby and an older son, four years old, and the baby died of sudden death syndrome. And uh, after a year, the older son didn't say anything. After a year, he broke down and cried and said, admitted that he had killed the child. And the father said, what are you talking about? He said, I wish that he would die one day. And he believed mm -hmm. that, that he had killed the child, of course, that had because nothing to do with it. Yeah. But that, that kind of thinking is really at the heart of, of Angela, and I think at the heart of the, of the mechanics of children's un uh, consciousnesses. What's your relationship to your dad? Very close. What influence on you? <sighs> that is such a hard question really to answer because uh, I don't think you can see something like that really clearly from the inside. Um, I think that you know the things I can name are uh, a, a discipline, an ability to to make your own schedule and discipline yourself and realize you're your own boss and you better get your own work done. Um, a kind of taking things in stride. I've learned from him to, that, you know, that, that the life of an artist is a, is a rocky road and there are definitely wonderful moments and moments of despair and moments of acclaim and moments of rejection and you have to be ready for all of those if you're, if you're really going to do it. But those are, you know, and, uh, and he's also a sense of humor. Is it hard to be? Arthur Miller's daughter? 
No, it's a lot of fun. It really, it, especially when you're really around him, that the real daughter part is a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, sometimes, um, it, uh, sometimes it's, I, I, I have had moments of being tired, you know, in a way, uh, of always having a way to answer for two people, mm -hmm. in a sense. But uh, I wouldn't trade it for anybody else. <laughs> What's next? Now that you, the Angela's out, and now that you've won awards, and now that it's being distributed, and... Yeah, well, people are seeing it, and that's a great joy to me. And I now have another script, which um, I am in the process of co-producing. And actually, I just recently found out that Ed Harris is going to be in it. I know he came and was... You yeah, interviewed him. Yes. Yeah, I saw him on the street the other day. Yeah, yeah, he's a, a great actor. So I'm very, very happy, and... And, and we're trying to put the money together, and hopefully we'll shoot that this summer, if everything goes well. But, you know, it's, a, it's an uncertain road. Good luck. Thank you. The film is Angela. The director is Rebecca Miller. We'll be right back. Stay with us.